What's up, you guys? It's Warren with Scale Audio. And today, we're going to go in-depth on the new plugin from FL Studio 21, the Vintage Phaser. So without further ado, let's get started. The sample we'll be using today is this vocal. And let us get our Vintage Phaser open, and boom, the new FL Studio 21 Vintage Phaser. Has a few different presets here, but we're actually going to go through these controls one by one. So if we look here to the left, we have minimum, maximum. Minimum and maximum are going to be the range in which the phaser will operate. If you'll see here, we get the representation in frequencies. If you look at the top left, so you can change these. Any phasing here is really low frequency, which is why you can't hear it as much. It's going extremely slow. But if I boost this, now we have a wider phase going on. If I move this up, it'll stay in that kind of nasally area. Where if I drop this back down again, we're going to start sounding clear again. Our HQ option is going to turn on oversampling, and the oversampling is going to create extra data points, and those extra data points are going to create better quality before it gets downsampled and pushed back out. Now, besides this minimum maximum, we also have a manual option. And this is actually for doing your own automation for the phaser, which is kind of cool. Uh, instead of having two, you can have one that can actually be linked and controlled. So if I went ahead and click play, Now, I want you to notice if I leave this in one place, it's going to sound the same straight through, which can still be a really cool effect. However, you're not going to get the actual movement of the phasing. So the idea is to be able to actually use this manually for automating your phasing to sound how you like it. Now, the next option we have here is feedback. And feedback is actually going to take anything in this phasing section, and it's going to feed back whatever percentage you have here back in to be rephased again, which means as you turn this up, that phasing sound and feeling is going to get more drastic. So if we take a listen. And that is the feedback. Next section we have here is going to be the modulation section. Now, this modulation section is going to determine how we move between our minimum and maximum frequencies here. The start phase, what this is going to do is when your phaser and your project are synced, it's going to set your phase to start at whatever degree. If you look at some degrees over here, this is set to. So if it's at 180 degrees, for example, then every time we click play, it's going to start at that 180 degrees. Now, we've got two types of LFOs, triangle and sine. Shouldn't need too much explaining for that. Triangle is going to go in a triangle pattern for moving and modulating. Sine is going to go in a sine pattern. Now, for the left and right phase, there's two LFOs actually used in the use of this phaser. And so those two, one will be left, one will be right. And the more you move this up, the more you're going to switch the phase between those, creating a more interesting effect. So if I go ahead and click play...
If you're listening in stereo, and especially with headphones, uh, you should have heard the stereo separation that happened there. And almost a feeling at some points that one side was playing and the other was just being pulled away. Now, this tension button is more of a creative control. It's supposed to be used for making things weird and wonky. So if we take a listen... And if you even look at our waveform here in the type, you can see it change. Now, next, we have our LFO speed. So if we listen. We also have a tempo sync. So now this will actually match to the tempo. And we also have a delay. Now, to turn the delay on, we have to click this button here. And delay is going to be pretty straightforward. We have our mix of how much of the delay we want. We've got our delay time, also with a tempo sync if we want it. Okay. We also have a low pass, high pass here, and you can see the, the uh, frequencies in the top left, right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut off. We'll take around there. So make it kind of tinny, get rid of some of this low, and try that. Cool. We also have the feedback option, like most delays. And we also have a keep pitch function, which is going to maintain the pitch while this delay is modulated. We have our stereo option. If I move it to the left, it's going to delay the left channel. If I move it to the right, it will delay the right channel. Now, this wouldn't be vintage if it didn't have a noise option as supposed to add analog noise to your signal. So if we take a listen. Right? It's supposed to add that kind of little bit of warmth to it. If we crank it, you can hear exactly what it's doing. Might actually be able to use that for something cool. We also have a noise gate. Now, what the noise gate is going to do is the noise gate is actually only going to let this noise come through when there's an active signal. So if I crank this, you're going to hear nothing. But when I play, right? And then we also have a mono input option, which is going to force input into mono. So if you have a stereo input coming in, it's going to force that to become mono input, which my input, I believe, is already mono. So no effect there. And then, of course, we have mix, which is going to be the mix between the dry and wet signals. Now, don't go anywhere. That's not it. We have advanced options. So our color gain here is actually going to be a low shelf. So we're going to be boosting the lows. And this is post phaser. So this is after. Now, our color frequency is actually going to be the frequency or the low shelf frequency that we're boosting. So if I boost this color gain and I start boosting the color frequency, we should hear the difference. Right? Now, we also have a input high pass. So we can use this, for example, if we wanted to high pass our audio before it comes in. And if you'll notice, we're limited at 200 hertz. So this could be useful for keeping out sub noise that you don't want 
being phased or delayed or affected. Good for cleanup. And we also have a high pass for the feedback. So for this puppy right here, now our rate frequencies here, when this tempo sync is not on for our modulation, rate frequency one is the maximum LFO frequency. So this will be the frequency when the slider is at its maximum. And rate frequency two, so what this is going to do is the higher the speed of the LFO gets, the less amplitude you're actually going to get, depending on rate frequency two. And now also the LFO scale and LFO pull are going to work together right here with rate frequency two to help and control the amplitude as speed increases. For LFO scale, this defines how much the amplitude of the LFO will lower as its frequency increases. And LFO pull, the more this is turned up, the more the LFO gets pulled down towards zero as its speed increases. Now LFO pull only works as long as LFO max depth is not zero. So they work together. Now, these last four here, play with them, see if you like them. I haven't really used them, so I'm not 100% sure exactly how they sound. I just know what the brand new FL Studio 21 user manual says. <laughs> and all in all, that right there is the FL Studio 21 Vintage Phaser. So we talked about the Vintage Phaser's phase settings, modulation, its delay, and the noise output plus special controls. And I hope that it was all extremely helpful. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios. Adios.